Hey folks, John Bernakovich here with All Points Design. It's allpointsdesign.ca. And today we're taking a look at the Oregon State University Permaculture uh, Design Template, specifically taking a look at the cross section and sketching out a cross section. Now you do not have to do this step. I do this with all my cross sections because I like to get a sense and a feel of what I'm looking at and just proof what's going on before I start to plot out in scale what all the uh, the elements are, but again, this is totally unnecessary. I'm currently using an iPad Pro 2017, uh, I think, 12.9 inch with uh, the Gen 1 stylus, and this is a program called Morpheo Trace. Uh, I started on pen and paper and vellum, and uh, truthfully, if it was easy to carry around and uh, always have in my backpack, I probably would still be doing it, but the graphic tablet's just very easy. So consider that you can do this uh, on a printed copy of uh, whatever your base map is, and then using transparency paper or vellum, or even uh, clear plastic sheets. It's easy to use with the right type of marker. So you do not have to have this equipment to do this. I'm just doing it uh, through convenience. So as we've seen in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, tutorials, I've been using this program. And what I've done is I've gone along and I've taken a look at a number of different areas here. Uh, put in a number of different uh, pieces. And what I want to do today is show you how I go about taking my uh, uh, my uh, cross section line. So my cross section line for this is basically starting over here at A, let's call it, and then going over to basically mid road, maybe just past mid row to B. And what I do first is I walk along and I just in scale. So make sure that you're either working in scale or you're working with gridded paper so you can measure appropriately or you can convert. So whatever your scale is, you can just measure what your, your house will be. So this is uh, nine meters, for example. And then let's say my real life ruler is, um, seven centimeters. Again, I, I work in the DECA system. It's just easier to use. I was raised on both Imperial and metric, but um, after a number of design uh, processes, I've moved to metric completely. And then we figure out uh, what what is one uh, one element, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. What is one unit uh, within nine meters? What does that equal on our ruler? And then we can start to work that way. The easiest way to do this is just to make sure that you're working in an engineering scale. So one to 10, one to 20, one to 50, and then pick up the appropriate um, the appropriate scale ruler and then working in scale if you're, you're working uh, on paper. In our situation, I've already measured, this is the nice thing about Morpheo Trace, I've already scaled this drawing. And so if I pull up my ruler, my ruler is automatically going to be to scale. So it's a nice piece about this, uh, about this program that I, I like using that it really does help with, um, with doing this. So one of the reasons why I use it. So anyways, uh, what we want to do is we want to translate this first and foremost into a drawing. Now, I know if you've been watching this, uh, you'll have me, you'll hear me a lot saying green and blue is for uh, water and vegetation. So I, I try to respect that as much as possible. But basically, I'm going to start to draw generally what I know is here. So I know that we've got the house. So I'm basically just translating this down. And if you want, you could even draw lines down. I've done that before with rulers and uh, how that would look if you want to make it absolutely what we're talking about. You just bring your ruler over and then you would draw a line down so you know exactly where that starts. And we can definitely do that. You just make sure that as you're drawing down, it's parallel. It's much easier to use graph paper this way because it'll uh, keep everything coplanar. And then we're getting to our end of our hedge here. It's a little off, but that's okay. Oop. Uh, then we're getting to the end of our sidewalk. Great. And now we're getting to our little gutter. So that's our sidewalk gutter. And then we're getting to the top of our road. That's it's even too off for my liking. There we go. And this is just a sketch. We're going to do this uh, on a grid paper in the next conversation. So again, if you, if you don't care about this, that's totally fine. I just like to sketch it out just to get a sense of it. And it just puts my hands on the paper or the screen in this situation a bit more. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start to draw the elements. So I know that the house uh, comes down and the eaves are at 4.27. So this is going to be my highest element. So if I'm taking a look at this paper, I know that if I start up high, uh, which I can do, if I start up high here, 
we're going to have the top of the house and the top of the house is going to be 4.27 down and again if i wanted to i could make sure that i'm working uh, this um, completely in scale at this point normally i don't because i just want to get down to what i'm doing so if we're we're fives down here then we're one two three four 4.27 4.27's right about there so that's going to be that's going to be ground also my balcony my balcony is 1.22 up from the top so 1.22 meters up so that's going to be bottom of balcony and then 2.44 is my top of balcony great so then I can draw down and I know my balcony pops out to this height. Great. Um, we've also got a few other elements here. We've got our mungo pine and we've got our little lilac um, over here, which is out of scope. And we've got our rose, which is right here, which is in scope, but not necessarily on the line. So there are ways to show different elements in a cross section in foreground and background. But for right now, we're just going to focus on what does this line cross? So the line crosses here, we've got the house, uh, the house basically goes all the way down to uh, nine meters, there's a little drop, not much. And then on the hedge, there's a bit more of a drop there. We've got the hedge there, hedge goes up about half a meter, so not too high just yet. Mungo pine, mungo pine is, didn't bring it over, I'm just gonna go back to my, my list here. The mungo pine is 16 feet of 4.88, so it, it even goes a little bit higher than the eaves, so 4.88. So just translating down, so that's generally where our stem is. Every once in a while likes to move around. And then we're doing uh, 4.88. It's about the height of it. That's top. Can move that over, bring this back. And the form is kind of funky. So there's our mungo, our mungo pine. And we've got our hedge. And now we've got our sidewalk, which is relatively flat. We've got our gutter. And then we're cresting up and then cresting over. Great. So that gives me a general sense and we ended up drawing it to scale, but um, I like to sketch things out just to get a sense of them first and foremost. So I know what I'm working with. And then I come back in and usually uh, do this and plot it directly on grid paper, which is what we'll be doing next. Hopefully that was helpful folks. I don't profess to be a cross section uh, professional. Uh, this is just the way that I figured it out. There's probably lots of folks out there that can do it better than I, but it's a simple and easy way to, to go about it. If you like the video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe or leave a comment below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, everybody.